Hey, what you reading for? I live in a small beachside town in the south of France. There's not much going on here. Not many people either. But in August, people pour in by the thousands from all over France, from Germany, from Austria, from all over. They stay for a month, some for just a week or a weekend. They have fun and then they leave. They go back to their lives in the city or in some landlocked town. That's kind of what October is like for the horror community, isn't it? People come from all over, from all backgrounds, all walks of life. They come and explore the darkness. Some for the whole month, some for just a week or even a day. Tourists of the darkness, I call them. And I, for one, think it's great. Living year-round in the darkness, that's not for everyone, is it? But it's true that in October, Darkness is fun to visit. If you are one of those tourists of the darkness, welcome. If you are a permanent resident, welcome. We are all here for the same thing, to explore and play in the darkness, to have fun with the ghosts and the ghouls, to frolic with the phantoms and unwind with the undead. So tourist or resident, I am with you. I'm here to have fun with the darkness and if you're looking for a truly scary read for Halloween, this isn't that video. Instead, this video is five recommendations of creepy, fun books to read for Halloween. If that's all right with you, give this video a like, give this channel a sub. I'm going to run a short intro sequence featuring the music of the great Estonian composer Lepo Sumira, and I'll see you on the other side to talk about some fun Halloween reads. The criteria for my recommendations for fun Halloween reads are as follows. Firstly, the book needs to be short, uh, breezy, a relatively quick read so that you can start and finish it during the holiday seasons. Uh, so all the books I'm going to talk about in this video are short. The longest is uh, 300 pages, for example, and the four others are all under 200 pages. Secondly, a fun Halloween read lives and plays in the darkness. This isn't fun. Valentine's Day reads. This is fun Halloween reads. So there is a dark, creepy setting, but the stories favor fun over fright. And they are not seeking um, any uh, literary ambitions either. They are seeking to entertain rather than enlighten. So in no particular order, we'll start with Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke from 2015. In the opening scene, this guy plans to spend uh, the day in lazy decadence with his girlfriend. So she sends him to the shop to stock up on chocolates, chocolates of all varieties and brands. So he's at the supermarket at an aisle full of candies when this kid shows up. Odd looking, well dressed, but old fashioned, even in an Amish kind of way. And the kid, he's just staring at a rack of sour candy. When this woman, presumably his mother, shows up, and she's dead in the eyes, almost like a zombie. And then the kid starts screaming at the top of his lungs. Uh, and everyone's freaking out, but no one intervenes and no one wants to get involved. And finally, finally, the lady she mechanically snatches a bag of sour candy from the rack and rips it open. So a bunch of candies fall on the floor and she grabs a fistful of candies and shoves it in her mouth. And the guy, he's, uh, he's looking on at this and repulsed, but also a bit mesmerized by the whole scene. When the kid turns to him 
and offers him a piece of sour candy. As you know what they say, never take candy from strangers. Sour candy isn't going to win any literary awards, that's not the point, but it does have a creepy kid, lots of candy, and antler-headed elders from the other world. It's got a Twilight Zone slash horror vibe to it, um, and it's about a hundred pages. So if you are a slow reader like me, you could probably knock this out in two hours tops. And while it doesn't take place on Halloween, it does have a lot of the elements the holiday is known for. It's got a lot of candy, but it's pretty cheesy. And I think a good bit of fun. The next book I want to recommend as a fun Halloween read is a horror classic. And that book is Hell House by Richard Matheson from 1971. Now, when I read Hell House, I didn't really like it. So why am I recommending a book that I didn't like? Well, hear me out. Prior to reading Hell House, I had read Richard Matheson's other horror classic, I Am Legend, which is excellent, thought-provoking, scary at times, and with genuine literary ambitions. So when I read Hell House, I was expecting more of that. But Hell House is not that. Not at all. Hell House is over-the-top, goofy horror silliness, which usually would be the kind of thing I'd love, except I went into it with the wrong expectations. I think if you go into reading Hell House, uh, knowing that it's super silly, I think you can have a lot of fun with it. Four psychics, well, three psychics and one skeptic, or psychic debunker, spend a night in a haunted house. They each have their own motivations. One wants to record and prove um, psychic phenomena. Uh, another wants to make contact. Another wants to defeat the presence haunting the house. The characters are all uh, over the top, super silly. Uh, the book uh, reminded me of The Clue, the movie, but with um, psychics and a haunted house. For what it's worth, I did meet one person who said she found the book scary. Uh, I didn't ask her to elaborate. I just nodded and slowly backed away. So some people may find the book scary. I thought it was super silly. But with the right frame of mind, it can be a fun Halloween read. It's 300 pages, but uh, it's well-paced and well-written and breezy. Uh, so a slow reader like me uh, could finish this in under five hours. Easy. The next book I want to recommend is a borderline cult classic, or a should-be cult classic. And that is Elizabeth by Ken Greenhall from 1976. Although this book was originally published under a pseudonym, Jessica Hamilton, I think today it's best known as Elizabeth by Ken Greenhall. This is probably the darkest of the five books I'm recommending in this video, but it's still a playful darkness, albeit murderously playful, but playful nonetheless. Elizabeth is 14 years old. And she lives in Manhattan with her grandmother, her aunt, and her uncle. Her parents aren't around, but that's not too surprising once you get to know Elizabeth a bit better. Every evening when the family gets together for dinner, grandmother tells stories of the family's ancestry, stories which may or may not be true. When Elizabeth looks into a mirror, she does not see herself. Instead, she sees Frances, a woman who claims she is a witch and claims she is an ancestor of, of uh, Elizabeth. Frances is here to help. She's here to help Elizabeth uh, discover her powers and especially to help her get rid of that pesky tutor, Miss Barton, that her uncle had brought in for her. 
This story uh, reminded me a bit of um, Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which is saying a lot because that's one of my favorite books of all time. It has a family living in isolation. It has a endearing or charming, yet probably dangerous young female protagonist. The story operates in uh, subtlety and insinuation. It's creepy and it's fun, and it comes in at around 160 pages. So a slow reader like me could finish this in under four hours. Easy. The next book I want to recommend is set on Halloween. And although it was published relatively recently, 2006, I think it has a good chance of going down as a Halloween classic, if it's not one already. And that book is Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. Set in a rural small town in USA in 1963, where every year on Halloween, this particular town engages in quite a peculiar tradition. This guy goes into the cornfields, carves out a gruesome face in a pumpkin and sticks it on top of a scarecrow. And then the vines come and twist and wind through this creation, sprouting impossible arms and impossible legs, and bringing this monstrosity to life. Life known to the town locals as the October Boy. And the guy who uh, carved the face in the pumpkin, right? He hands the October boy a butcher knife. He stuffs his um, torso with candies and chocolates, and he leaves. Meanwhile, in town, all the teenage boys from 15 to 17, they have been locked in their rooms for five days. Five days with nothing to eat. And on Halloween, they are set free to go on the run where they will try to kill the October boy before the town's church bell strikes midnight. Even though this little book has quite a sizable kill count, it has a monster and slasher element to it as well, I would consider this more of an action adventure book rather than a horror book proper. But it's very Halloween and very well written, I think. I had a blast reading it, and I think you just might too. It comes in at around 180 pages, depending on the edition. So a slow reader like me could finish this in three hours, three and a half max. The last book I want to recommend is my book, Stories to Tell Your Children, Assuming You Are a Very Bad Parent. It's a collection of um, tongue-in-cheek modern horror fables. There's a seasonal element to the collection. There's a, an autumn story, a Halloween story, a Christmas story, and a summertime story. And the fifth story is uh, called uh, Hansel and Gretel YouTube Stars. I wrote this with, um, with the idea of a Morticia Adams telling stories to her kids, but it's not for kids. And, Incidentally, one of the stories in this collection was originally published by Flame, Flame Tree Press in their hardcover anthology of supernatural horror, along with uh, Lovecraft, Poe, and M.R. James, and others. So someone thought that there was legitimate horror in here. For me, it's more pulpy, camp, fun horror, but I suppose there's a bit of both in it. I think it's quite good. I'm quite proud of it, and it definitely fits the theme of fun Halloween reads. And it's a good way to support the channel, buy a book and uh, leave a review. I'll leave links uh, to the US and UK Amazon sites if you want to get a copy. Another good way to support the channel is to uh, hit like, subscribe, and leave comments in the comment section below. What do you think of my list of fun Halloween reads? It's admittedly a, a short list, but maybe you can help expand on it. Uh, do you have um, a recommendation for a fun Halloween read? 
If so, uh, tell me about it and together we can fill up the comment sections with uh, and create a long list of fun Halloween reads for all the tourists of darkness and its residents for this Halloween season. If you can't think of uh, any fun, creepy, short Halloween read, you can just stop by the comment section and say hi. I always uh, love hearing from you. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.